What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are here for episode 7 of the Rip City franchise in Madden 20. Searching for our first victory. We're 0-6 right now. And I actually thought that this stretch was going to be winnable games. I did not expect or were prepared to see a 5-1 record for the New York Jets here. But we, uh, last episode, you missed last episode. Last episode was a big episode. We done the difficulty down to all pro where, you know... We still lost both of our games against Denver and New England. But as you can see from the score lines, 27-9, to 27-17. A little bit more competitive than the games that we were having beforehand. So it's all about baby steps. It's all about trying to get in the best spot. But the question is, is this team we have good enough to win any games? You know, and we had some outside chatter last week. Johnny Manziel, former Heisman Trophy winner, now known drug addict, was tweeting at the XFL. They were tweeting at the Snowhawks. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it was him. I don't know if we went on a bender again. We do have one roster spot open on our team, but right now, it's just its not the time. I mean, if you're facing 0-16 in the face, drastic times could call for drastic measures. Right now, we still have the man that we pillaged away from the XFL. Their MVP, P.J. Walker, Philip Walker, and he's just starting to get confidence. I think he's just starting to get his legs under him. He's starting to literally get his legs under him where we are scrambling uh, a lot more. He's over almost 100 rushing yards the last two weeks. Adding that dynamic ability to our offense. I think for you, Janus, is a big-time positive. So we come into two games here. I don't care what the record says. The Jets are a winnable opponent. Unless they have, like, nine extra X-Factors. They do have Derwin James. Okay. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. That there might be the, uh, the, the most... Terrifying safety tandem in Madden history, and clearly why they are 5-1. And, and we probably are going to fumble the ball 347 times next week. And I'm sure you guys are going to say, how didn't you read the defense, C4? God, how did you how did you throw it right in front of Derwin James like that? You should have known he was going to fumble it. My YouTube channel with 9 trillion subs, I would have read and thrown it the other way with my 60 overall quarterback. Come on! You know, that's where I'm at with this Jets team. This is going to be such an annoying game. But it's still the Jets. It's still the Jets' offense. It's still a team that has Le'Veon Bell, Sam Darnold, no wide receivers, bad offensive line. When they have a bad offensive line, and you're going to come up against, in my opinion, top 17 defensive linemen I've ever played with in Madden 20, Tano Passigno. Man, that in just five games, six games, we'll say six games, has 14 tackles or loss. When you have a man like this, who is an absolute game wrecker? Who dares you to run the ball? And you have a team, an offense, like the Jets, that just want to use Le'Veon Bell, and that's it. We have a chance for an upset. We have a chance to make history here week eight. If not, week nine against the Dolphins. Let's get into it. All right, look at P.J. Walker's stats. Not particularly great. One touchdown, five picks. We have the best football, I think, for his reintroduction to the NFL. His best football is ahead of him. Oh, come on. Come on. Perry Nickerson. Big time PBU, the former Jet. Got a enough speed. Got more than enough speed to keep up with Robbie Anderson there. Oh, let's go. Read the defense. There we go. Like a book. Sua Cravens jump ball in the red zone again. This is where we want them. We want Darnold throwing the ball. As long as it's on the arm of Darnold. He's shaky at best. We can win. Just don't need Le'Veon Bell with all his abilities and stuff like that taking the game over. Jump ball. Sua Cravens. That was double coverage. I better see some comments about Sam Darnold. B was open, Darnold. Because that was a bad decision. Real bad decision. Oh, come on, David Reese. There we go. See, it's Le'Veon time. The realizing... They're realizing that they just, if they feed the ball to Le'Veon 30 times, there's there's no way we're going to be able to stop it. We do not have the playmakers capable of doing that. Oh, what hell of a pass breakup, Perry Nickerson. I love seeing that. All right, Darnold has like two pass completions on the drive. They're both slants. Both just really difficult plays. Come on, Watts, get off your block. You got pancake by the fullback. Untouched. Le'Veon Bell in the end zone. Hopefully this is the spark that wakes our offensive up and, uh, you know, gets P.J. Walker going. Knowing that he has to now equalize. Or else it's going to be an insurmountable deficit sooner than later. 
There we go. I'm going to run slant. You know what? Screw it. If Sam Darnold can run slants every other play, I'm going to be able to mix slants back up into my play calling. When my coach for my recommended three plays calls slants, I'm taking it. It's a dumb play call. Third and six. We're going to try to go play action because I don't know why. X. Hell yeah. That's why we did it. It worked. Demarcus Robinson, 30-yard catch. Portland is in the red zone. They come CJ Procise, the glory hound, if we will, our red zone back. There's like four or five rushing touchdowns on the season. Gets yet another one. Equalizes what Le'Veon Bell did. Great response from the Snowhawks. This game is tied up at seven. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> I need pa I hyped up fast enough. It's this big run stuff and monster giant. He cannot get off a block, and Le'Veon Bell is heating up. This is did not good. It might be tied. This is not good. Oh, passing on rocks him and Shua Cravens. Take a knee. Gets his second interception of the game again. Please, just let Sam Brown throw it every other time. We have a chance. Oh, let's go Boston. Scott gets to the second level. 33 yards on the ground. Not quite as effective as Le'Veon Bell. But he's doing something. 5.5 yards per carry. Oh, and he just leads it to Kale. Oh, the new tight. I love having him back as tight end score. Caleb Wilson, pretty much a wide receiver play in tight end. It's exactly what this offense has been missing already. Was well, he only been back two weeks? And he is that safety net option for PJ Walker. Big time gainer. Portland. We might we might get a lead here. Hollywood Higgins! Red zone. Oh, right. Almost on the goal line. First and goal. Do we dare. Do we dare bring him? We gotta bring in Procise. He's automatic at this point. I don't think he's been stopped yet this season when it's goal to go. Big CJ Procise coming in. He's not even that big. 225. What was that in high school, for God's sakes? He gets destroyed, but it's up to the one. Setting us up third and goal. You know what it is. You know what it is. Let's go. Strong toss to the left. I think we're, we're in four down territory here. I, I don't know. I mean, points are points. Oh, it works great. Don't even need to think about what we have to do if we didn't make it. Because Procise, all he does is make it. Okay? And that's a 14 to 7 lead. I, I, he was, that's his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. I think, honestly, he has 40 rushing yards. 40 rushing yards, five touchdowns. Those are, that's a Lendale White stat line right there. Third and 12 here for the Snowhawks offense. Caleb Bolson, obviously, is going to be our first read, but he should be covered up by Jamal Adams, which is never ideal, but we'll go to him Fatality. anyway. With Jamal Adams. No. Why? Jamal Adams should have been punished there. He was focused and staring the quarterback's eyes down and lost track of the tight end. And then luckily, his X Factor comes back and just completely saves his ass. First down conversion, and then just, oh my god, gets destroyed. Oh no. Jimmy! No, Jimmy! No! We could have won to half with the lead, Jimmy! You know, we're, we're just we're getting fresh off the tails of Fury Wilder, right? And, and and everyone knows Deontay Wilder, not a technical boxer. Makes a lot of mistakes, but he had the eraser, right? He only needs that one punch. That's exactly what these superstar X factors are for the Jets. You know? We, we beat them. We're playing better, and they're playing bad. Jamal Adams gets beat, but then he just has that eraser. That just turns the game on its head, and now we're tied. Oh, Wilson out of the... Oh, he is that X-Factor. We have been. We don't have actual X-Factors that we've been kind of complimenting and, and trying to cheese on for the Jets, but a literal X-Factor to our offense has been Caleb Wilson coming back from injury. And we're going to get some... Have at least an opportunity. I can't say we're going to get some points, but we're going to have an opportunity for, for some points before the end of the first half. There you have it. 17-14 lead. We got a chance for a win. Well, this Jets play calling is giving me mono. There we go. If they're only going to run slants to Robbie Anderson, I can mix it a little bit to James Prochet. Over 200 yards through the air for P.J. Walker. That's a big gainer. Seven. Uh, we got the pro, uh, precise option out the backfield. Higgins is going to be going in motion. 
Uh, Caleb Wilson at tight end has been our go-to, even though one would want... What? Same, David Reese. Same, bro. That is... Oh... First down, P.J. Walker gets destroyed. Where's the flag? No respect. No respect for my players. I know that we're, you know, the XFL, the, you know, the developmental team. But come on, give us those flags. That was Tom Brady getting smashed right outside of there. It would have been 15 yards. Probably disqualification. Third and seven. Get the ball back. We forced... Oh, come on, we need a big play. We need a big play. Get out of the pocket. B's wide open. B is wide open and it's underthrown. Third and ten. Two just terrible executions to start this drive. We're going to try this play with Boston Scott in the backfield outside of Procise. Rather Procise. He's open across. Third and 13 for the defense. This is a big save. We've got uh, punts on the last two drives for the Jets, but this is our most important one. Because he just, he just can't let... Oh, thank God. I mean, they get, they might have just gotten a field goal range with those extra yards of missed tackles, but you know, keep, still keeps it you know, right where we want it for a score range. Because we, we're going to need a touchdown. You know, let's be honest. We're not going to win this game with field goals. With the nerd kicking field goals, it's going to be tutties. Oh, it's... Oh, the doink. He doinked it. Oh, Jay's Prochet first down, and not only a first down, but that gets Jamal Adams out of his X Factor. Third and ten. I actually might take a shot to Robinson. I bet you he's dying. He's dying for an all. Oh, there's some sort of hold. Gonna make it even, even longer. Oh, they they accepted the penalty. Okay. Not only they accept the penalty. If we get this first, oh, that's a great run defense. If we get this first down, it's gonna be over a hundred yards for Boston Scott. Should be pretty cool. And he does get the first down. And a lot more. And then a fucking penalty. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, we got him another. Th we have to get a stop here. We have to get a stop. It's third 13. He couldn't ask for anything more. Two minute warning. Tana passing, y'all. Oh my god, it's a check down to Le'Veon Bell. That is going to be a punt, and we are going to only have to maybe be able to win this with a field goal. No! Fucking throw the ball away! You stupid Fortnite dance. You got to get deep. You got to get it. Jeez, Prochet! I love you! Prochet again. Take hit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've missed like 10 passes that are absolute gimmies. Right there. Boom. Boom. Field goal range. Didn't fumble it. Appreciate you. Need that after that. Especially after that drop. That, that We needed that from Caleb Wilson. Okay. They burned the timeout. This is it. 44 yards for the first win in Snowhawks history into six mile an hour wins. It's good! Do you believe in miracles? Let's go! You weird robot thing. Suck it. James Prochet. With the unbelievable two picks to our Cravens. They were five and one. In came the best record team we've played. Obviously, we probably have played a we you know one and zero undefeated, but five and one Jets, and just like that, amongst all the mistakes, all the missed throws, giving up over two hundred rushing yards, the Snowhawks get their first dub, twenty three to twenty one. I'm about to cry. I knew it. I knew this first win would be so satisfactory. Tw oh.
And it wasn't pretty. It was not pretty, but both sides of the ball came up big when they had to. Over 300 yards passing for P.J. Walker. No touchdowns, but no interceptions. The 58% completion percentage is not great, but I don't care, man. We almost had a, our first 100-yard rusher in Busted Scott. Would have been nice to get him one more yard. Two touchdowns for Procise. We had seven catches, 132 yards from the preseason All-Star. That kind of went away the last couple weeks. Since we hit the regular season, right? James Prochet, I thought he's, you know... For how he dominated the preseason, he was going to take off. And then this is his coming out party. Seven catches, 132 yards, including that, that massive play on the last drive. Five catches, 108 yards for Caleb Wilson. Did have those two drops. One of those drops was one of the worst drops I've ever seen in Madden. But, you know, he got that he got that last catch that put us right into field goal range. Uh, Sua Craven's insane game. 11 tackles, two interceptions. We had three TFLs there. Couple sacks, Noah Spence, David Reese, and then of course, Goggles getting the job done. Long of 52, but got the game winner. 100% field goal completion percentage. And there you have it. It took forever. That was an intense game. We got our first up with the Portland Snowwalks. Rip City's on the board. 23 21 over the New York Jets. Because we get the win, you know what that means. We finally. Can spend our player upgrades. There have been, there's so many, and it's been well deserved. Especially, I mean, Pastino has definitely deserved his his fair share of uh, upgrades. Boston Scott, Sua Cravens, Demarcus Robinson, Reese, and Hollywood. So uh, this this gonna feel good. All oh, let's let's just at least get the first one. Obviously, like, I'm not gonna spend ten minutes and showing you guys all these ones, but let's just see let's just see how how good this feels. Oh, did you see the way it went from yellow to green? Just like that? Oh, it felt so good. Everyone right now in the building is on cloud nine from that week eight victory. We got a weekly award winner, which is Sua Cravens with an 11 tackles and two interceptions. And then following to our left is a, an incredibly very winnable matchup against a 1-5-1 one, one Miami Dolphins squad. Looking at the Dolphins, they got Andrew Luck, they got Xavier Howard. Of course, they have Andrew Luck coming out of retirement. Which we probably should have got Andrew Luck. Being completely honest with you, you know, with the ties of the XFL, we should have. We this should have been away. This should have been away. This should. It could have been away. A happy ending. Andrew Luck could have had for quarterback. But we're not going to think about that. We're not going to think about names inside the building, especially because we keep getting chirped by some quarterback. Because PJ Walker's coming out the best game of his NFL career, actually looking like an XFL MVP last week, getting that victory, and now he has to go and do it again, and let's get a clean sweep here. Against the lowly 1 5 and 1 Miami Dolphins. Boom, on the run again to Hollywood. Oh! And the tremendous block in Hollywood Higgins is in. Maybe the only game we're going to play all season long that the team, in comparison, is really not that much better than us. And look who, look at that block by 83 Wilson. After that drop last week, I was getting ready to cut him. Banish him to the shadow round. Gets the big catch last week at the end of the game to put us in field goal range. Gets the massive block there to spring Higgins for the opening score. Oh, that is soft run defense. Jill was not even giving sniffed until he hits the second level. Miami pull one back. Boston Scott out of the backfield for once. We don't sail. It's an accurate pass. P.J. Walker, 6 of 9, 100 yards and a touchdown. Last week's win has given him all the confidence in the world. He's playing at an unreal level right now. Second and 10. Let's get him. Let's get P.J. Walker moving outside the pocket here. What do we got? B. Sure. So we're opening up the second half here. Andrew Luck back against the wall for the Dolphins. Third and nine on their opening drive. Being able to get a stop here. It's going to go a long way. Oh, of course, Preston Williams. He's an absolute beast on the outside. He's like, what, 6'4", 220. Going against Slim Jimmy Moreland, who's 5'10", a buck 70. It's a bad matchup. Okay, great tackle as well. Good pursuit. David Dow, the rookie out of Michigan State. Third and goal on the three. Bend 
but don't break. While Andrew Luck is triggered in his little X Factor there. We're going to do more triggering than that to stop him here. Kim Dietschy, his second TFL on the drive, holding him to a field goal attempt. A little dump off to Boston Scott. The, the video got a little choppy on that Dolphins last touchdown. All you need to know is they got a touchdown. And uh, now it's tied up at 17 apiece. God damn Elgato. Third and nine, trying to equalize this last score there from the Miami Dolphins. All A's wide open in the middle of the field. Caleb Wilson. Just a mismatch nightmare for opposing teams' linebackers. Even a team with Miami with two athletic linebackers, Raekwon Quill and Jerome Baker. Caleb Wilson is still getting his. The lead is once again Portland's. Oh, no, he got destroyed. Safety blitz, Rashad Jones. We still, got, we still got a one-point lead, I guess, but that was not a good play call. Terrible pre-snap adjustment and awareness from P.J. Walker there. Rashad Jones, safety blitz, had to go to the running back soon. And it's too little, too late. <sighs> Oh my god, Robert Kimdichi, breakout game. Third sack, he has three sacks, six tackles, two more TFLs. He's hungry. Oh, the screen pass, called to perfection. We get a tremendous blocking downfield. Boston Scott, nice little skip. Look at that, 15 to 20, 200 yards, two touchdowns, PJ Walker. Seven catches, 99 yards to Boston Scott. A mismatch all day long. Oh, and he eats the sack. Now, again, it's the secondary. We got burn on Rashad Jones on the safety, and there they send in Nevin Lawson on the corner blitz. Jesus. Okay, let's go. Uh, we'll just go slot. I mean, we are in field goal range right now. Any more sacks, any more losses, it's not going to be great. But we're still in the nerds range. Nothing too crazy. Just dump it off here. Get a couple yards. Kick the field goal. Wait, why can't we kick this? Why are we punting it? Fifty-two yards. That's a gimme. Leave, but want me to punt that? Get out there! He hasn't missed a kick all year. That is a perfect kick. It is up, and it is good. I can't believe the computer. The coach, Hugh Janus, wanted to punt that one away. Did not trust goggles. Who's money? Snowhawks back in the lead here late in the fourth quarter. Okay, we're going to go all up blitz to stop the run here on third and five. Home to a field goal so we have a chance at a miss, at a block, and some time. They just, oh my god, they go play action. And we force enough pressure for him to just sail it into row Z. Field goal attempt upcoming. All right. Two point deficit. Buck nine to go. Oh, Caleb Wilson, middle of the field. Gonna burn our last timeout. Oh, midway on the 45. Gonna use the sidelines here. Oh, Prochet, nice little catch and grab. Stays in bounds, unfortunately. We are getting ever close to field goal time. Why do they keep they keep sandbagging goggles there? With his, with his range. I think we get even seven yards. Go, 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 go. We might have to kick the... Oh, man. That is going to be close. Okay, we're going to take a shot here. Absolutely can't have a sack. At least like the same range we made the kick last time. Throw it away right away. Throw it away. Five seconds, six seconds. Out comes Nerd Alert. Goggles. We'll use his name proper. Rodrigo Blankenship to win the game. Oh my god, it's up. And it's good! One second left on the clock. His second make of 50 yards. Give him the goddamn game ball. If we could see this, out. we're going to squib kick this, and, and we're a squib kick away from getting not only a win, but back-to-back -back wins. Make it simple. What an intense goddamn game.
Outside of the one touchdown, they got messed up. Very close against the worst roster. The only game I saw on the schedule all year that I thought we had a chance of winning. On all Madden, all poor, whatever. It was this Dolphins game. And we got it done. They were 1-5-1. and one. Now they're 1-6-1. We get our second win of the season. Ain't laughing now. I mean, maybe the outside chatter, the Johnny Manziel chatter, motivate this team to get to this point. But two back-to-back -back wins. This was definitely not easy. Took a last-second field goal. I mean, we ate bad. We had some bad plays. Bad plays that Rashad Jones' safety was a killer. I thought that might have been the death blow. But we ran the ball well. Another outstanding performance. Without a doubt, the best passing game of Philip Walker's NFL career. What do we got here? Let's look at the final stats. So he had 123 QBR, 18-26, 240 yards, two touchdowns, no picks for P.J. Walker. We had 89 yards from Boston Scott, 38 in the ground for Philip Walker. Seven catches, 99 yards. So you might have to argue Boston Scott could get uh, the, the game ball. At least on the offense side, we'll give it to him. For almost 200 total yards of offense. Two touchdowns for Hollywood Higgins. Defensively, we got nine tackles from David Reese. Huge game from Kim Dietschy. Two TFLs on six tackles, as well as three sacks. A sack, the first sack of the season for Passignon. But uh, also, man, Brent Blankenship going four for four. Two field goals of 50. Hitting the game winner. It's a team effort. You had, you know, everyone. Everyone. Their hard work, blood, sweat, and tears went into this victory. Getting the second win of the season it's going to roll man we don't know what it feels like to lose anymore because we win we get to spend some xp and how fitting we get it for blanket chip and work on his power a little bit so we can keep adding more yardage to to the distance plus two kick power is huge 89 kick power uh david reese another player getting uh i think he had three points they were able to spend after the last victory we got a couple there he's up to a 69 slim jimmy did not have a great game got picked on quite a bit by Preston Williams, but when you're an outside corner tasked at 5'10", 175, covering one of the biggest wide receivers in the National Football League, uh, being able to hang in there, being able to continue to battle, that's about all you can ask for. Let me get a little point here for Julian Davenport, but I'm ecstatic, man. It was one of those things. There was times I was like, this series sucks. It's going to be way too hard, and even that, man, we get our first two wins, both nail biters. No, oh, that's intense. We do have an injury. Sua Cravens with the MCL tear, our player of the week. Getting two interceptions against the Jets. And he's out for eight weeks. When did that happen? Bad news. Bad news to end the episode on. Two wins. We got a weekly award. It's Kim Dietschy. Six tackles, three sacks. So given, given how it worked last week, he's about to tear his ACL here against the Kansas City Chiefs. But I, can't, I mean, I'm so happy with this team. We'll spend these points as well. Um... It's good, man. It's in a great spot. This I was worried, man, that the series it would be too difficult. And the fact that when we do get our lone wins, they are last-second field goals or last-second touchdown, fourth and 30, fourth and a mile conversions to James Prochet. That was awesome. That was, I'm still vibing. I'm, pro I'm probably going to go play these next two episodes after I'm done uh, with this little segment here because I, I, I'm feeling this here. I'm vibing right now. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I hope it's, you, you enjoyed the series. I hope you're happy that we got our first wins. I hope it was as satisfactory for you as it was for me. Thank you for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit when you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent. I'm doing.